it's me, Heidi, with Revive, and today I am going to show you how to paint furniture with plaster. And paint is probably not the most accurate description of what you're going to be doing with plaster, but it's the only one I have. So anyway, we're going to we're going to cover a piece of furniture with plaster now. Before um, I was introduced to the Amy Howard at Home Company, I didn't even know this was a thing. I didn't know you could do it. In fact, I don't see it on Pinterest a lot. So if you want to do something that's really going to wow your customers or yourself, sorry, we live by an airport, <laughs> um, that nobody else is doing it yet, um, at least not in mass, um, is plaster. So I have fallen in love with plaster. And I um, also do canvas plaster art, um, but I thought I'd today again I would show you how to do it on a piece of furniture. So I am going to walk you through the steps and then I'm going to do a little demo. Um, but first I thought I would go over um, some of the prep steps and the uh, supplies that you're going to need. So first of all, if you can, do this outside. You can see I'm in my backyard because it's messy it's very messy. Um, and if you can't do it outside, get, get a tarp and put it down. I should have done that even outside, but it's all uh, natural materials. So I'm just going to hose it off when I'm done. Um, so, and then get your piece of furniture that you want to paint with it. And you're going to want to put down a coat of one step paint first. Now, um, what I have learned is that um, if you are working on a piece of furniture that is really dark, like a walnut or a mahogany or a cherry, and has a lot of natural tannins in it, um, the water from the plaster is going to draw out those tannins and it's going to either yellow your piece um, or leave little spots. And um, there are areas in this piece on the front uh, that have done that that actually kind of like the way it looks, but if you don't want that, you're going to want to make sure you lay down a, a step of one a coat of one step paint and then I do I like to do a layer of um, uh, shellac based primer and that is a natural uh, sealer and that will seal your paint um, seal all the tannins into the wood um, if you want to you can do another uh, coat of one step paint on top of that um, I didn't but um, it's totally up to you so once you have your piece prepped and ready to go, you're going to want to get all of your supplies out and ready and all your plaster mix and all of that so you have it and you're ready to go. Um, this plaster does not dry as fast as like plaster of Paris, um, but still to get it to work and you're not going to be wanting to run back and forth to your craft room or your shop um, and make up stuff as, as you go along. So <clears throat> you're gonna have more flexibility if you're all totally prepped and ready to go. So on the subject of plaster, this is not just any plaster, this is authentic Venetian plaster that is sold by Amy Howard at home. And um, it doesn't have any fillers or additives or um, plastic adhesives. Um, which you'll find in a lot of the stuff you buy at uh, craft stores or in um, uh, Plaster of Paris. You do not want to use that. This is not the same thing. Um, this has three ingredients and three ingredients only. It's limestone, um, calcium carbonate, and marble dust. And those three in a proprietary blend uh, make up your Venetian plaster. And this is what people at artists have used for centuries. Um, in, especially in the Renaissance, in Renaissance art in Italy. So um, that's what you're going to want to use. Uh, to tint your plaster, you can do that several ways. Um, I have done a couple of different ways. On this particular piece, I'm going to use a, a product made by a maker studio, which is Amy's um, sister company, and it's called Chalk Art. And this is, let me see if I can find one that's not covered in plaster. Um, it looks like this. And I got it in the, a trio of uh, turquoise blues from lightest to, from a light to a dark. And I might pop in some green as well. But um, you can add that to the plaster or you can scrape it on, which I'll show you in a little bit. You can do, I do both. Um, so there's that. You can also tint your plaster with mica powder, 
with pigment powder, um, with milk paint. Those are all in their powder forms. You're going to want to mix it up first, um, the powders together. So the powder of the Venetian plaster and the powder of one of those three I just said. Um, mix them together first and then add your water according to the directions. And you're going to want to get it to a sour cream consistency. One of the things that I like to do is I have arthritis and it's really hard for my on my hands to stir things. That's why I have a and a blender, you know, I mean, a, a, when I make cookies, a, my brain. <laughs> anyway, so I use an immersion blender uh, to get, I put it, I mix it just a little bit with the water until I get it, get it to um, almost a sour cream consistency. And then I take the immersion blender and I um, blend it in. And I use these, um, like Home Depot has them. I know Ace does and Lowe's. It's these plastic paint containers with lids. And you're going to want to make sure you get the lids because once you make up a batch, um, they'll keep in here for a long time. So this is what it looks like. Um, like I said, it's a, a sour cream consistency. And I've got four of them here in all of my four different colors. So uh, you can pick up those containers. You can use old sour cream containers or what have you. Um, okay, what else do I want to go over quickly? Um, you're going to want to have a bottle uh, ready hand uh, by you of water. <laughs> I said that, but um, a spray bottle of water. And make sure it's not the streaming spray. It's a fine mist. So I put it on the fine mist setting. You also are going to want to have several different sizes of metal spatulas, um, like spreaders. So I have a five inch, a three inch, and this one is offset. I like the offset one. I also have a six inch and I have a one inch as well. I tend to use these three the most. And then have um, paper towels cut up. I have them, you know, my select a size paper towels in a pile over here ready to use. And then um, I have my sink just over here. If you don't have a sink nearby, get a bucket of water so you can dip and, and clean off your, your trowel trowel is another word for it, um, easily so that when you don't want to spread color in places that it shouldn't be, um, you won't accidentally do that. So, okay. Um, I think that is it for supplies. Um, you will see in the, in a time-lapse video, I'll show you next me doing the entire piece from the front side, but I wanted to give you a quick, um, tutorial here in, in regular speed uh, to show you how I do. The other thing you're going to want to, I forgot, is um, a uh, Maker Studio, or a Maker Studio sells them to, uh, or Amy Howard at home, um, natural bristle, hair bristle brush. Um, and this helps me apply the plaster and then I'll spread it around with my, with my trolls. Okay, trowels. Okay, so first of all, I am going to <clears throat> do my white, and you can if it's if it gets dried out or um, you want it to be a little bit of a thinner consistency, you could always add water. So I'm just gonna go and spread this on. Um, now when you're, after you're done applying it, you're going to want to use your, your metal scraper or your trowel. Because plaster, as Amy says, plaster loves metal. They're made for each other. And if you don't want to dry out your hands, if you're messy like me, you can always wear gloves. Um, my hands are very dry today from doing this yesterday, so... And you, you don't want to have any lumps, just um, not too thick, just a thin, a thin later, thin coat. And then you're going to want to, um, you will add more after it sets up. And you'll have more to work with. But this lays a foundation for...
Oops, see, I spilled some. <laughs> you, that's why you want to do this outside or uh, have a tarp underneath you to drop cloth. time of year. I always feel so bad for the dogs. Luckily, my my dogs, and I, I think it's the breed, are super mellow, and they are not even phased a little bit by fireworks. I'm so lucky. My parents used to have a chocolate lab, and one time on Fourth of July, the dog was so scared, even with Valley, like the doggy Xanax stuff, like ate, tore through their uh, door between their laundry room and um, the laundry room and the garage and ate through like the drywall and we found him in the garage. <laughs> it's so sad. I felt so bad for the dog. So, okay, so I usually just um, wait a few minutes for this to set up. Um, it really doesn't have to be very long. Okay, my, make sure I put my lid back on, airtight container. Now I made up three of these to go in order of darkness. my lighter one and this is my darker one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I will do is I'll use like a, a um, tongue depressor. I get these in bulk at Home Depot. And I'm just going to kind of eye where I want this where to start. I'm going to kind of spoon it on generally in places where I, oops. <sighs> Salvage that. <laughs> My second roll. Okay, so I'm just going to spread it on like this. that and then see how I did that and then I'm gonna get my darker color. I actually have three colors. Oh this is my lighter color. Oops. So I'm gonna put my lighter color up here a little bit. Walk it in. I know you probably can't tell on here, it's a very subtle difference in color. Then I'm going to take my darkest color.
don't know if you can tell the difference in the color. Now I have a really dark one that I will go over by hand. Um, and I'll show that. And when you're mixing these up, um, make sure if you can to make enough for your entire piece or write down the ratios of whatever you're going to mix with your plaster to your plaster. So, um, you know, if it's one part plaster and one part, or sorry, 10 parts plaster and one part mica powder, write it down so you're consistent. Okay, now I'm going to take my five inch trowel and I'm just going to pull down like this. Okay, this is where you're going to want your paper towels to come in handy and your extra bucket. So I kind of take, I wipe off the excess. when I start adding a little bit of water, okay? Just a little bit, and then I'm going to pull down and pull up. Now this is where the artistic part comes in. You're just going to keep doing this until you get a look that you like. Um, I end up going up here and adding more white and pulling it down so I get a very straight-shaded look. Um, and I will add other colors as um, I need or I want, depending on the look I'm going for. So, um, you can't see this, let me. It's evident to me here that I need more, so I am fireworks, <laughs> like I said. Um, Sure, you're on camera, but <laughs> this time lapse roll. No. Oh. <laughs> That's my husband. <laughs> can I make a noise though? Um, can you give me like two minutes? Uh, go like this. Okay. Okay. Now for the purposes, I mean I would go through over this several times and like I said, put light up there and pull it down, but we are short on time. I'm going to show you really quick how to, um, so I'm going to take this darkest color right here. 
just going to put my finger in here. This is how. And I'm just going to add it. Add. This is calcium carbonate paste. And um, you see I'm adding here, adding that color. Again, just from an artistic standpoint, wherever you want to, I'm like putting it on the side here, I'm kind of painting the sides. So you kind of got the idea of how I do that. And then I'm going to take my trowel and oh, it's always good to have all this stuff. I am going to add a little bit of water. The chalk paste is not as wet. And I'm going to do this. Okay, so you see how I did that. I'm going to blend it. I'm going to just continue to work on it and blend it and move the plaster around until I get the look that I want. And this takes some practice, I guess. Um, um, so if you, know, you feel more comfortable before you start off on a piece of furniture, just get a piece of, um, you know, PVC board or, you know, MDF board, excuse me, from the store, from the hardware store, and just practice. It's super therapeutic. I love working with it. And if you're a little OCD, then um, it might take you longer, but, you know, the, the goal isn't perfection. It's a very messy look. So, anyway. <coughs> That's how you do it.